Well, there are stereotypes for a reason. It would be wise for us to never prematurely judge and underestimate our opponent, regardless of size or weight or even gender. Go Hey, Sifu Kwasi back with you guys. And yes, let me thank you guys for all of the continued support. I am so excited about all the new content that we've got planned just for you. And do me a favor, if you're liking what you're seeing so far, drop a quick comment down below. Let us know you're into it so we can, of course, make more of it. So follow, 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 and fo follow us on all of our social links here, 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 and everywhere. That way you'll be able to keep up with us when we're not dropping new stuff. And then, of course, you'll get all of that behind the scenes goodness that you guys tell us you like so much. Now, I did tell you I'd be back with more Kung Fu Curiosities. More Kung Fu Curiosities. You wanted me back. Back. And listen, as a martial artist, you probably guessed I've been asked a ton of questions over the years. And I thought it'd be fun if not only I'd answer a few of those questions, but have a few of my martial arts friends that you may or may not have seen on the channel chime in as well to answer a few commonly asked martial arts questions. And if you've got a particular martial arts question, why don't you go ahead and drop a comment down below because we just might be able to get to that one in the next video. He's pretty good then. Okay, the number one question I usually get from colleagues, friends, or even just strangers that find out I do martial arts is... What martial art should I enroll my child in? And my answer to this is usually by asking them a question, which I know you're not supposed to, but I have to find out. What's the particular goal for your child? Is it fitness, self-defense, or do you just want them to have a plain old extracurricular activity? Also, what's the age of the child we're talking about? Because depending on whether they're, say, 3 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 and more, it's gonna be a different answer. Hi, how are you? Because say it's a child three to seven. Honestly, the particular art is probably not gonna matter as much because at that age, a lot of the things they're learning in the particular art won't imprint as much as if they're older. And my feeling is the main goal at that stage in their life is just to go to a school where they get a sense of structure, discipline, and have a little fun while they're at it. Now I will say my nephew, who is five, just started taking jujitsu and he loves it. But who's to say if he had done Taekwondo first or Karate or something else, he wouldn't be having just as good, good of a time. And again, it's up to the child in a particular activity level, so I'll leave that one there. Now, when talking ages, say, eight to preteen, we can start getting a little more specific on needs and what particular art will suit the child. If the goal is getting some training for the kids so they have some tools for self-defense, because maybe, say, they're getting bullied in school or you just want them to be well-prepared if they get bullied in school or what have you, just to be able to protect themselves. I don't want to fight you, Flash. I wouldn't want to fight me neither. I'd say go with a good karate, krav maga, or even a good jujitsu school to get them off and running in that lane. Now, teens and more, you can get as specific as you like because now you can get some really good feedback from your kid because they're young adults and they'll tell you what they like. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and I want to have them answered immediately. And you'll have a better feel of what they gravitate to and more importantly, what they'll put good effort into because of course there's a cost factor involved. As a kung fu practitioner, it's safe to say I'm a little bit biased, but here's the deal. The benefits of training in traditional martial arts are wonderful to me as long as there's a balance where they spend just as much time on the fighting aspect as they do the forms or the katas the benefits of learning qigong or proper breathing is a super plus and in the case of traditional kung fu you get the sense of culture and history do things like lion dancing so it's all a big win not to mention the weapons the shiny weapons. The intro at least to them and how to handle weapons in both Chinese and Japanese martial arts particularly is amazing. Isn't that amazing? Now here's the caveat. Filipino or Polynesian martial arts will introduce you to the weapons usually first. So things like knives, arnis, escrima, all that comes at you at once so you can pick your poison. Some arts also strongly emphasize competition. So if that's something your kid is into, consider that as well if they're already involved in other sports where they enjoy that facet of competing, then an art like Taekwondo is probably worth looking into. Summing up things, you and your team can pick an art at that point that may suit them the best based on their real interest, be it a traditional or more military-based martial art. Okay, you ready for more questions? Great, I got a few of my martial arts friends ready to answer them. Don't forget, stay to the end of the video because one of the questions you want answered might just be coming up. Question? Absolutely, yes. A trained martial artist can beat a person who is bigger in size and weight. And we must know what movements we could use that might be effective when evaluating our opponent's size before we engage. We all have strengths and weaknesses. If our opponent is muscle-bound, this is to our advantage because he or she might have less flexibility and is not at an optimal quickness uh, or unless they stretch regularly and work specifically in fast twitch training. Also, endurance could be a weakness for our opponent if he or she is very large. While there are stereotypes for a reason, it would be wise for us to never prematurely judge 
and underestimate our opponent, regardless of size or weight or even gender. Never underestimate your opponent. Expect the unexpected. So how do we beat a larger sized opponent? By choosing the correct uh, open-handed weaponry. Who wins a fight is not solely based on size, but more so based on the warrior spirit, mindset, consistent conditioning, skill set, opportunity, strategy, quickness, core strength, generation of power, and effective strategy, location, and technique. So another factor that is, uh, that's going to affect our victory could also be impacted by whether we're having a, an athletically gifted day or not. Uh, we all have off days. So I speak from decades of personal experience of where I was smaller than my opponent and yet still won. This is largely because my opponent easily dismissed and underestimated me, which gave me an advantage. So my strength was, is that I was ready. So practice, practice, practice because one day practice will be over. Yes, two reasons why. One, it has a strict hierarchy. Two, it's ritualistic. There's a lot of rituals that goes along with that. Three, it has uniform, oh, three reasons. It's strict hierarchy, ritualistic, and it tells you what to wear. And then there's Sims. The four reasons, hierarchy, ritualistic, tells you what to wear, and there's sermons that goes along with it, and if you don't do it, uh, the five reasons. A strict hierarchy, ritualistic, tells you what to wear, uh, sermons, and if you don't do it, you won't be saved. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. That's putting it mildly. There's a lot of reasons, uh, because it is very cultish in nature. And sometimes we do need that to actually get ourselves in mind, uh, get our mind and, and body into a uh, serious mode to train. So, because you know, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Question. In my organization here at my school, three years. In saying that, I think you have to have, of course, a very organized and structured program to be able to have a student to reach black belt level in three years. That's why here, if you see, Everything is structured. You see the training cards, everything depending on the level, red sash level, blue sash level, green sash level. So what we do here, the first year, I look at students training, you're working on beginner level training. The second year, you're looking at intermediate level training. And the third year, you're looking at advanced level training. And in that, if it's structured well, I guarantee you, every student should be able to reach the level of first degree black sash in three years. What? There you go. Did you find those helpful or what? Questions now for you guys. What do you think? Drop your comments down below. Let me know if you have a particular question of mine that you'd like to get answered in a future video. And of course, we'll have part two of this thing coming up very, very soon. I want to thank all of my martial arts colleagues who participated in this video. Guys, stay safe. See you all in the next round. And of course, keep punching.